The purposes of the beginner wizard guide is to provide you with a build and item recommendations that will reliably carry you through the pre-torment difficulties and get you into low torment farming without requiring specific legendary or set bonuses. For the purposes of the demonstration, I have removed paragon points and high level gems to simulate a beginner character. The build revolves around the channel deficiency of Disintegrate Convergence, whose effectiveness is amplified by easy to obtain fire gear and costs are mitigated through skill choices and select items. The basic strategy is to open the fight with Black Hole Blazer, drawing enemies for an easy follow-up with Disintegrate Convergence. Keep yourself mobile through Teleport Wormhole and save through the O-Resistance Amp from Energy Armor Prismatic Armor. Two background buffs, Magic Weapon, Force Weapon and Familiar Spark Flint will strengthen the damage of your freshly leveled character, while you still lack significant set bonuses. Disintegrate is the primary damage dealer of the build, a channeled skill with a reasonable arcane power cost. It becomes even easier to maintain with the Fire Rune Convergence, while the rune itself offers no spectacular effects outside the simple increase of the width of the beam. The increased AoE efficiency and the ease of boosting and cheapening fire skills makes it a great beginner choice. Note that Disintegrate needs 2 seconds to reach its full 890% potential, so pick a good position to start channeling from and root yourself in place for a while, kiting will only hurt your DPS. A second damage dealer, although on a hefty 12 second cooldown, comes in the form of Black Hole with Blazar. Respect the downtime of this skill and use it sparingly, to group big packs of trash enemies or to clump up elites away from you. Keep in mind that Black Hole will interrupt your Disintegrate channeling time, so open the fight with it if possible, avoiding the damage loss from the Disintegrate ramp up time. Two passive damage buffs will take up active skill slots, and even though they will not bring exciting gameplay to the table, they will supplement your DPS in the time when it lacks the most, with a fresh character. The first buff is Familiar, which adds an autonomous but minor damage source in the form of a minion at your side. It will also add to your own damage through the Spark Flint rune. The second buff is Magic Weapon, amped to the impressive 20% increase of Force Weapon. Keep in mind that both buffs and your shield mentioned below last for 10 minutes. The long duration is both a blessing and a curse, as you might neglect one or more of them falling off. Glance at your buff bar in between rift runs and rebuff accordingly. The shielding spell of choice is Energy Armor. It has an undeniable drawback in the face of the Arcane Reserve decrease, but the toughness improvement more than makes up for it. A 35% armor boost, coupled with the additional all resistance from the Prismatic Armor Room. To evade dangerous attacks, seek out the next pack, and for general mobility purposes during rifts and bounties, teleport will take a permanent spot in your farming setup. For additional speed and flexibility, take the Wormhole Rune. This choice will allow you to jump twice for the price of one cooldown, once you learn to play the 3 second availability window of the second teleport to open doors and cut corners. Your early game mobility will only be rivaled by a Demon Hunter. This concludes the overview of the active skills, now let us look through the passives. While it is less reliable than its cheat death counterparts for other classes, Unstable Anomaly is still another life at your disposal. With an agreeable 60 second cooldown, it will become a constant companion to your farming, preventing the occasional mishap. Glass Cannon offers you a daredevil trade, 15% damage increase at the cost of 10% in armor and resistances. As dangerous of a gamble as it might seem, the wizard keeps distance effortlessly, and additional damage is more than welcome early on. Being able to offset the toughness loss through armor spells and passives further sweetens the deal. Unwavering Will is a greatly synergistic passive with a channeling spell playstyle, adding to your toughness when standing still and more than making up for the glass cannon drawback by itself. It also throws in a 10% damage increase for good measure. The 1.5 second trigger is shorter than the disintegrate ramp up time, so taking advantage of this passive comes naturally. Finally, Audacity brings a strong multiplicative increase to your damage in close combat, ensuring that whatever survives walking towards you through the disintegrate beam will not stay alive for long. That about covers it for the build, now let us go over the items. During the early gearing stages and the initial torment progression, rare items and random legendaries will occupy the majority of your gear slots. As you gradually collect your first sets and key unique items, 
following the in-game comparison system and the stat priorities outlined below will result in a solid character for the first few torment difficulties. While the majority of gear will drop unpredictably from regular farming, certain items can be targeted through the completion of bounties. Reaper's Wraps are an excellent bracer option for beginner wizards, as the spenders of the class tend to be arcane power heavy and primary skills are lackluster for arcane power regeneration. These bracers restore up to 30% of your arcane power reserves when you get healed by a health globe, and the careful balancing act between channeling your spell and grabbing health globes for regeneration will make a difference in early gameplay. Thankfully, these bracers are craftable, and the plan for their creation drops when you kill the Act 5 boss Malthiel on any difficulty. Ring of Royal Grandeur is a legendary from Act 1 Cassius that reduces the number of set items required for set bonuses by 1. While it might not be immediately useful, obtaining powerful bonuses such as the 4 and 6 piece set bonuses of the Taurasha set as early as possible for a huge spike in character power is an opportunity you should not pass up. Bounty farming will be inevitable for Rift Keystones, so optimize your farming time and get this ring as soon as possible. As previously mentioned, wizard spenders, including Disintegrate, can be harsh on your arcane power reserves, when no set bonuses are available to skyrocket your damage. Another amazing cash item can easily be added to your setup to ease the strain on your resources, the Pride's Fall Helm. Obtained through Act 3 cash bounties, this helm reduces your resource costs by 30% after not taking damage for 5 seconds, which is easily achievable with proper positioning. The majority of the gear will be found by random chance, as you farm normally by killing monsters, opening chests and gambling at Kadala. While the list below is not exhaustive, these are some of the pieces to look out and spend blood shards for. All the items that construct a set, for example, Taurasha's elements including the Taurasha amulet, belt, gloves, helm, chest, pants and source. Individual armor pieces such as Cinder Cult and Tasker and Theo will provide you with valuable damage bonuses and synergize with numerous endgame builds. Weapons such as Etherwalker, Serpent Sparker, Sunkeeper, Jeshra of Orpheus, Wand of Woe and the Furnace. They either provide powerful elite damage bonuses or twist a potent skill into an even more powerful version of itself. The craftable Devastator Mace deserves a special mention in this category. Finding the plan and investing the crafting materials to roll an ancient legendary one with high weapon damage and fire damage is one of the better weapon options available early on. Orbs are no less important than their weapon companions and more efficient to gamble for due to their lower price. Early on, a Mirror Ball can make for a potent primary skill build with Magic Missile. Triumvirate is the foundation for an Arcane Orb build with Dozera's Magnum Opus set, while set orbs like Firebird's Eye and Taurasha's Unwavering Glare are best in slot options for their respective sets. Your armor sockets should be taken up by the highest tier Topaz gems you can afford at the time, the weapon with your highest emerald, while the helm is best filled by an Amethyst gem for a boost to health. If you stumble upon jewelry with good crit stats and a socket, you can also start dabbling into legendary gems. At the lower gem levels, ones with individual damage procs like Wreath of Lightning, Pain Enhancer and Gem of Efficacious Toxin will yield the best results per gem level. With better gear, wizard staples like Bane of the Trap and Zystone of Vengeance should take priority and be leveled as soon as possible, as they are individual multipliers to your total damage calculation and scale the best into the endgame. In the Paragon points, max out movement speed to the 25% cap and spend the rest on intelligence in the core section. Adding to maximum arcane power is up to personal preference. Prioritize crit damage and then crit chance in the offense. Armor followed by life percentage and all resistance is the order in defense. Finally, focus on area damage and resource cost reduction in utility. And this is it for the beginner wizard build. I will leave you with a couple of more minutes as I show off the gear that I used in the demonstration. I hope you enjoyed the guide and if you did, I would appreciate your subscription to my channel. See me live at twitch.tv slash thedeadset, talk to me on Twitter and Facebook that I link below and I'll see you guys next time.